Kaz. Yes, it's Kim. Okay. Hello, Rose Kaz of Lady Boss International. Welcome to Let's Have the Conversation. Um, today, I'm going to switch it up a little bit because I posted my whole little TikTok fun on people and how they respond when I say I'm not a feminist. Um, don't believe in allyship and I'm not a liberal and you're like, wait a minute, let's talk about this. I need to hear more. So I'm going to have you interview me and ask me questions because that just makes more sense since you want to know more about my thoughts on it. So I love tell it. Us about Thank you, Desiree. I really I appreciate you having me here. I appreciate you like literally flipping the script because I'm all about that because I think that's what needs to be done. Um, I just want to ask you in advance of asking more questions. Am I allowed to curse on this program? Absolutely. Okay. Good. I encourage deal. it. Okay. I figured <laughs> I just always like to ask the mama of the house if I could drop the F bomb of fun and drink. So fucking thank you. Um, great. So okay. yes, I'm Rose Kaz and I'm thrilled to interview you, Desiree. So the first thing that got me thinking when you were like, yeah, I'm not a feminist, I'm not a liberal, like fuck all that. And I was like, well, okay. Right, because like old school feminists forgot uh, all the rest of the ladies who aren't white, and for that matter, anybody who might be like, well, I don't really like that whole like male patriarchy, white supremacy thing, right? So I'm, I'm with you on, I'm like, okay, so I wanna know more about that. I also understand a little bit about not being a liberal because sometimes the liberals get in the way of the liberals and it's like, oh my God, how can we get anything done for fuck's sake, right? All right, yes. So those, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead with those two things and I have a sort of wild card question for you just cause I can tell you're sort of a, a body boss and I'm a body boss. And so I'm just gonna leave a little little, little excitement there. Um, so first, okay. tell, me, tell me why you're not a feminist. Well, one, it's because of the foundations of feminism, right? Like, like you said, it absolutely started with this idea of like, oh, hey, let's get all women available to do these things. And then there was like actually a campaign, like Susan B. Anthony went so far against Ida B. Wells to really disparage her, right? And she's sitting there trying to make this work and it's really continued since then. And I think that it kind of is born from, we have to recognize that this country never intended to see us as black people, as humans. We were seen as property, right? So mm -hmm. even less so for black women, right? And black femmes. So for me, feminism is always gonna fall flat. It, and it still falls flat today. Hmm. Yeah. So, so I totally hear you like Ida versus Susan and that's just in its own thing, totally F, right? Mm -hmm. Like there was a whole lot of progress that needed to be made, still needs to be made. And in that sense of like, what, what are we doing over here ladies? But here we are still, right? And so this leads me to the question, like I think about a lot of the classes that I've taken over the years, um, both as like a student of academia and then just like a lifelong learner of like, how can I be a better human um, and, and unpacking stuff, right? And it's like, so, okay, we're kind of in the same boat, but like maybe we've painted a couple more things more colorful. Like we put out our pride flag during pride month or we're like support women, right? Whatever. But like, right. are we actually going in there and like excavating the shit in order to like actually have progress happen, right? Like, and right. So, so, so I feel you on that then what's the word, right? Like if it's, if you're not a feminist, right? Because of that, which I feel like, what would you, and maybe, maybe it's like, fuck your definitions, Rose. Like maybe I don't need a I mean, word. Yes, fuck your definitions. But if I had to come up with a word, I'm a humanist, right? Because on top of that, being a feminist also says that I have to agree with the gender binary. So it's consistently leaving somebody out, right? Like, so are, are trans women feminists? Like, are, are we are we advocating for them as well? Or are we saying that, no, like, you have to be, you know, assigned female at birth to be a feminist? Like, it gets so bogged down in things. And for me, white supremacy is so about absolutely boxing things in, creating these spaces and really creating more division, right? And compartmentalizing all of these things. So for me, I am anti-oppression, pro-liberation, and I'm a humanist. So like, if there's someone oppressed, no matter who that is, I wanna see those intersecting lines. And for me, feminism literally feels a whole lot about white women and women presenting white people trying to be white men. 
Like, right. honestly, they're really, the equality I want to be equal to, so you want to be equal to your oppressor as well. You want to be equal to the oppressor of us all. So, in the fact, you actually want to be an oppressor. And it shows. It shows in a lot of the things, right? On top of that, for me, is I'm amazed at how white women have now poised themselves and because of white supremacy, benefit from being the experts in anything. Like, honestly. Like, honestly. Give, me, give me an example of that. Because I have a few okay. in my head. Do you have Sure. And um, on TikTok, we were talking about just like, you know, white womanhood, white femininity and all of these kinds of things. And let's just take mom groups, right? Because we've discussed that. And like you get into these mom groups with these baby wearing moms or breastfeeding moms, et cetera, et cetera. And now all of a sudden they are experts on rearing their children, breastfeeding, and baby wearing. Meanwhile, every single indigenous <laughs> Culture mm -hmm. has breastfed and baby worn. And to the contrary, white women, when you're talking about the creation of whiteness, specifically in America, did not even take care of their own children. Black women breastfed their kids. Black women raised their children. Black women raised their kids. But here we are, not that long from it, right? Because you could still see that played out when you're talking about, now you're talking about class intersectionality, right? Who are the mm -hmm. nannies? Who are the caretakers? We're still there doing that. But yet here they come to the forefront with their feminism, their, 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 you know, boss babe attitudes. And like now all of a sudden they're experts. And I'm like, oh, oh, wow. That's white supremacy at play. That's white supremacy bolstering your white womanhood. So for me, that's another place where feminism falls flat. It's never given credit to where this all came from. And now they've catapulted to the top of every single thing as experts. And that's weird to me. Got it. Yeah, totally see what you're saying. It's sort of like, um, I don't I don't know that it's an assimilation or a cultural appropriation, but it's taking from the experts <laughs> their wisdom and not crediting it for like from which it's come. So I, I hear what you're right. saying. And so that that's like a really that's a really good example. And it's everywhere, right? Like it's like from from the goopers it's, it's to with the, every the, thing. Right. right. Like, you know, now they're business experts and I'm like, so when were y'all running businesses? Because the last time I checked, black women were opening the most businesses. But how are you guys the experts to be teaching this kind of thing? That and it and to not recognize that it's white supremacy that bolsters their their whiteness, right? Like that bolsters right. And, and, and it has a very, it's a Stepford look, isn't it? Like when you start looking at these MLMs, you know, it's like the thin bleach blondes, you know, it's all of the things repackaged. And for me, there's not enough healing within side of the white community, specifically with in between, you know, white femmes and women mm -hmm. for them to be experts on anything and trying to guide anything. And then, cause they can't see it. They can't see past their own selves, is my thing. Okay, so one more question on this, because I was yep. speaking to a couple women today. Um, they have a, a, a network they're pushing forward called White Women Reckoning, and I want to connect them with Tamara on what she's doing with, you know, hashtag white women for reparations. Um, oh, that'd be great. Check her out, Tamara Johnson Seeley. She's running for Senate in Georgia. I'm just going to plug that here on, <laughs> on your pod. Um, but so... The, these two, these two women I was speaking to this morning, um, they are white women, and they're they're working on you know utilizing their their I mean they they have PhDs they they've got their their uh, privilege in academia and probably in other places. But we talked about specifically in academia and how that looks um, to, to to show up as a white woman and not right. have the sort of like you know, savior, like white savior. I know you and I have shared stages in Clubhouse talking about like allies, like, is that a word we like? That's a word we don't like. Some people are like, well, why? But, you know, and so these sort of buzzwords or whatever. And so I'm just curious from your perspective on like, and I, and I, and I want to preface this by not, I, I, I'm probably just going to sound like a whiny white bitch right now. So we'll just say that. So you right? sound like a whiny white bitch. I want us to not keep having these conversations that don't get into depth because somebody's going to be afraid to say something wrong, right? If you say something yeah. wrong, we move through it. I may say something wrong too. I'm not above correction, right? Like I'm here for that. That is literally the space that I create. Like, let's be wrong. Let's fuck up and let's figure it out together. So, and let's move forward. 
right? Let's yeah. move forward, yeah. not cancel each other. And like, oh, fuck. Right. anyway, yeah. So these ladies with, you know, with their academia, with their PhDs, with their, and I don't know where exactly they live in South Carolina, but they're in a red state and they're trying to do the right. best with their, right? So they're showing up and they're realizing, and, and I've had this experience too, that's why I'm speaking to it, as far as like trying to get other white ladies to like even have a, an ounce of consideration of this, right? To, to, to make conversations normal, to be vulnerable and be like, I don't know how to unpack the patriarchy of my feminism. I, I, I like ladies. Yeah, we, I, I want everybody to do great. But like, still, as one of my team members says, you can't just put pink on the patriarchy and call it progress, right? Which I, I love. That's right? a great enough. Shout out to Amanda Bell on that. Um, yeah. And so I'm just like, I'm curious from your perspective of like, if, if feminism is canceled, and we want to be humanists, like we want to look at a more en 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 encompassing world. And we, we, we have a lot of white ladies with privilege that aren't sure how to access the, f the fields to unpack. That's what these ladies are saying. It's like, we got we to gotta teach these white ladies how to unpack that shit, right? And so mm -hmm. you, as a, as a woman who, as I understand, you're, you're mixed heritage, right? You're Irish and you're African-American? I am yeah. Irish and black. I'm not Irish African-American. Okay. That term Irish always black. talks but yes, I'm Irish and black. Okay, Irish and black. Um, like, how do you how do you see the space? You know, are you like, I'll stand in the space and I'll, I'll witness. Are you gonna open the door for these white ladies? Are you just gonna like be out in the parking lot when they come out ugly? Cry? Like, how do you see your role in that while we work our shit out? That's a great question. Um, that's a great question. I actually create spaces for those landing things, right? I'm not gonna ask anybody to jump out of a plane and not offer a landing space, right? So I do have an online community that's there for intersectional healing. Um, I offer my own coaching services and decolonization work. I have one-on-one. -on -one. So no, I'm not asking anybody to do the labor without giving them something. Disclaimer, this is not like demand labor of black women. This right. is, you can ask for labor of Desiree, because <laughs> like, Desiree is offering that, right? And for me, that unpacking has to happen, like, let's be honest, we're meant to be selfish, right? A little bit, selfish for me is a little bit of me. I need white women to look into them and see how has this impacted you first? How has colonization impacted you first? Do you realize that before I became property, you were property of white men and you still are property of white men. So like, mm -hmm. can we talk about that for a second? So mm -hmm. for me, my angle from it is like, y'all have been being colonized since the 1300s and property of white men since then, right? Like, and the patriarchy was absolutely created by cis hetero rich white men. And so when we're talking intersections, we got to talk about class, we got to talk about gender, we have to talk about socioeconomics, we have to talk about all of the intersections. We cannot binary it down into white supremacist definitions of black, white, woman, man. Like it is too empty. It is too surface level. So mm -hmm. for me, yes, I provide that space, that coaching, that guidance, and that support system, right? Like inside of the intentional community, it's literally, there are different people doing different groups. I'm doing decolonization. We have Saber who's doing, you know, alchemy and grounding. We have Shamika doing inner child shifts. Safi is doing like activism where she actually makes like templates, like here, just take this and mail that, right? Like empower yourself. It's so simple to do. Just show up on the 19th every month and I'm gonna give you the rundown of what's happening in the government at your local level, at all of this. So it takes one, it takes a village and it takes a community and we need to dissect what whiteness actually is and how that takes away community. Whiteness supports individualism, whiteness strips culture. And until white people actually reckon with themselves, right? Like I love the name of like white women reckoning. They need to reckon reckon their own colonization mm -hmm. right their own right totally great before point. they can step out and do anything which then leads me into the allyship where i have a problem okay well, do you want to talk but wherever you take it just so you know that that's yeah. my balance my, yeah my foundation for why allyship doesn't work either okay so i thank you for that for that i mean that's like a really beautiful answer to what i guess was a good question i just kind of pulled it out i was like <laughs> i'm doing this why yeah. call me babs walters um so 
Okay, so then tell t- tell me if you will why allyship doesn't like settle, like why that's just like no for you. Because again, I attack systems, right? Like not necessarily people. I will attack a person if that person is being a douchebag. But sure. like your existence, you can't help your existence no more than I can help my existence, right? And like so, we have got to talk about the system. So when we're talking about allyship, that is for me saying that you, because of your existence, are doing something for me, right? Like not to benefit yourself, but only to benefit me. And that gets weary. That gets exhausting, right? Because it's like, well, how can I do this? Like it's constantly needing a checklist. But when we look at the system of Christianization, colonization, and white supremacy, and how it's all combined and how it all comes in, you see the stripping of humanity. Like you have to be inhumane to do the acts that Christian Christianization needed, that colonization needed, that white mm-hmm. supremacy needed. And remember, again, if we go back into the wholeness of it, like y'all did it to yourselves first. Anybody that could feed a person that looks like themselves to lions for entertainment doesn't give a shit about feeding my children to alligators, right? Like. Mm-hmm. especially when you otherize us so much. So there's so much more healing that needs to be done in the white community before it mm-hmm. could step out and think it can help any of us. And then when you're talking about the systems, like I said, in the systems is this system here in America was created for me to be property forever, right? In 2022, mm-hmm. if there was not a war, I would be the property of someone. Right. So when you think about like, okay, well, that was ended. Um, we're liberated from that system, right? Like that energetic hold, that system as black people, we are not property within that system. They created laws and stuff that impact us. But again, white people are still living that system. White women mm-hmm. are still marrying white men. They are still becoming the property of white men voluntarily, involuntarily for points of survival, they're still voting along the sides of their white men, they're still holding their systems up. So how the hell can you help me get liberated from a system that you are okay, still you held captive? Got you, got you. Okay, that pulled it together for me. Because, right, like you're like, how are you going to save me? You need to save yourself, right? But so God, this- yes. I'm on the shore. You're still drowning. You should figure that out first, okay? Right, 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 right. got it. And and the, the white women reckoning, we're talking about like, you know, the unpacking and like, and, and it sounds like what you're doing with, with your, you know, it takes a village, your different healers essentially, right. Is like, you're holding space yeah. for that. But the, the important thing, and I think consistently think about my sister who I love dearly, but we couldn't be more different, right? Like she literally says, I don't politic, don't make me politic. And I was like, you mean live, right? Like, <laughs> like, I don't mean, to, I don't mean politic in the combative sense, but I mean, in the sense right. of being like, aware of what the fuck's going on based on the history, based on what, you know, whatever. Anyway, and when I think about white women unpacking this shit, I'm like, I mean, girl, I'm a bag lady. I'm just like, let me dish it out. Let me put it breakfast club, we pull all my shit out and I put it back in over and over and over and over, right? right. And then there's some people that are like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm just gonna carry this shit around or I'm not even gonna pick it up. Like that's just over there in my storage unit and I'm not fucking with it, right? And so what I, and I know we've shared stages talking about this too, is like that, that level, that necessary level to, to like heal that shit individually. Like how are we, like sometimes I ask myself, like how do I ever think we're gonna make progress when there's that collective, like it's a huge amount of collective shit, right? And so I don't wanna sound like dismal or whatever, but do you, like how do you maintain hope knowing that there's so much of this personal shit? Girl, that- I'm exhausted. Of course, if you found, <laughs> Dismal? I'm. Fine. I don't believe it. Um, but my thing is, is like honestly, like I said, refocusing it back. People care about things that affect them. Like that's just what it is, right? Like everybody wants to sound and be altruistic, and that would be a lovely utopia, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that that is a false thing, and that actually creates the dystopian society that we live in, right? Like mm-hmm. I don't expect your sister to give a shit about what's happening here with me in my home, right? Like. Because has she even unpacked what's going on in her own home? Has she unpacked 
her own impression? Has she unpacked what's happening in her life? How she got there? Did she even make a choice to get to where she is, right? Like, so her saying, I don't politics for me sounds like I, I, I'm not even dealing with my own shit, right? Like, I'm just going to perform. It's my I, theory that like white women perform women, womanhood, right? Because when white supremacy stripped out culture, right? You'll have cultural norms, right? When you go into tribes or clans, those norms, you know, even something as simple as I eat with my hands. This is my cultural norm mm -hmm. that's accepted within the culture. And then other cultures that have their own norms don't really question that. They just respect it. Like, oh, that's Dez's culture and that's what they do. But when white supremacy came in and stripped culture, gave you Christianization, they created societal norms. So now we eat with forks and knives. And if you eat with your hands, you're a savage. Though the majority of the world ate with their hands, mm -hmm. right? And this small faction decided that recovery was needed, right? And makes you more sophisticated or what have you. So it becomes a performance of what humanity should look like because humanity has been erased, right? Like, oh, ah. we are good girls. No, we don't politic. I always vote the way my husband says. And this is how we speak. And no, and I go to college here oh, and respectability politics and all of those things because you don't have culture. So it's not cool to do certain things. This is also why you see where, you know, people come outside of white culture and they start adopting other things, right? Like, oh, I'm wearing mala beads and namaste and all of this. And it's like, that's a whole fucking culture you're wearing, homie. That's not a fucking exercise. That's like thousands of years of ancient fucking practice from a whole culture. But you thought it was cute. So you took that on, or you'll see like the black scent and notice that like, it's not a regional accent. You know, I've spoken, my cousin sounds just like me. She's white, blonde hair, green eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Notice it's regional though, right? She's not like, oh, hey girl, what you doing? She's not performing black womanhood or a caricature, but white mm -hmm. women tend to be performing womanhood based mm -hmm. on Christian societal values that have zero to do with culture. So for me, it means unpacking your own shit before you step into anybody else's. Because this is why we need to give allies checklists. Because y'all literally, not you y'all, but like y'all in the whole, need checklists on how to be a decent human being. And I can't fucking do that for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, if you saw yourself as a whole human being first, if you allowed yourself to stop performing what should be, you wouldn't need a checklist. It would just resonate with you because you were being your whole true self as well and showing up authentically for you. Right, which I think, if I may, draw the, the parallel to, to you and I is, uh, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not gonna use the word an ally, but you and I is doing similar work. I like to say like same mission, different copy in the sense yeah. that like, we're, we're rabble rousers, right? Like we're like not here to sit on the sidelines and be like, well, that's, that sucks like let's well yeah it sucks let's talk about why it sucks and like yeah, so let's, how, yeah let's let's change it right and so i'm just I'm, I'm glad to be in your company but i'm also just thinking about as you're saying this um ch you know need for checklists like it, it sounds to me like you have that innate you have that checklist innately as your humanity because you're a humanist not a feminist right like you show up in the world as a human right. and you treat people as humans right and that's yeah. either innate or like i think about this as as a creative right like i work with cameras and there's people who can be trained to use like the newest gadget or whatever the shit right but like right if you don't have that muscle there's no tool right. that's gonna help you right and so i just wonder about like this like this this checklist notion right it's like you know there's people who are like okay tell me how to do it and I, i'll be better i can be a be i know i can be a better human but that, and that's where performance comes in right like that's performative allyship that's when you get those things like oh this is performative and it's like here's the checklist heal yourself okay D take it take take all of the things that you know are suppressing and oppressing other people and apply it to your own life Get you. That's that's the checklist. Start inside. That's inside checklist. first. 
Right. But the only reason I'm pressing on this is because it, in, in 2020, I was posted out in Portland, Oregon, and I was, you know, I always have my cameras and I'm always trying to like get, get the story and, and share with the world. And then it occurred to me that like, this is a story that needs to be shared and documented and all of the, the uprisings that were going on that summer long overdue for sure. But I also realized like it, it wasn't actually my story. Like it wasn't my photo that needed to get into editors inboxes. It was somebody with darker skin that like hadn't gotten the shot before, or hadn't gotten the, or got the shot, but like didn't get the, the inbox, right? Like whatever, didn't have the opportunity. Right. So I, I sat on my hands, I sat on my cameras and I, and I intended, I had, I started to have conversations like you and I are having. And one of the things that really just can frost in my fucking liberal cookies is that all of these liberal people sitting around being like, you know, just, I mean, Portland was literally on fucking fire, right? Like literally, literally. 45 yeah. through sent in the feds. I mean, it was a game of Lord of fucking flies. It was ridiculous. Right. Was so hard. all these people yeah. are rallying to literally like figure, okay, what do we do? What do we do? And nothing got done because everybody was canceling each other. Right. So right. Well, we got to talk to so-and-so. And, and I was like, Hey, let's just build the fucking stage in the park and let's go. Uh, well, we got to talk to so-and-so and see what she thinks about those specs. I was like, okay, text her now. Uh, I don't know. She might be mad if I text her. Cause like, we don't want to, and I was just like, Oh my God, like, can we get something done? And so I'm using this as a segue into tell me why you're not a liberal. Please. One, I would say just from that one story, you're probably more of an anarchist than you are a liberal. Um, who you were talking yeah. to are liberals. <laughs> Those are liberals. It's always maybe, wait, but okay. Um, they're the moderate, right? They're, they're the dangerous moderate that our ancestors talked about. Like they're, it's, they're <laughs> always the right. Here's how I describe it, right? And obviously it's a broad stroke. Not every liberal, not every white person, not every black person. But what happens is it's enough to be true or enough propaganda for it to be true. Like in the case of black people, well, black people are violent. Well, if you had propaganda against you for the last 400 years, yeah, we probably fucking do look violent. But then when you look at our lack of response to certain things, I mean, that's not true. Because if it were me, I'd be burning this shit down. But anywho, um, it's always the liberals, right? It's always like, oh, let's just wait and see. Um, well, maybe, but maybe that's just too aggressive of a mood. Don't you think we should talk to somebody? Like, fuck no, we shouldn't talk to anybody else, right? Like, we're gonna build this stage, I'm gonna put it on there. And you know what? I know that I'm going to probably get the notoriety. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna amplify the black voices on the stage that I built. Fuck yes. You're not a fucking liberal, you're an anarchist. <laughs> like, so one, drop that shit. Um, because the rest of those people that you were talking about were liberals and those are who I have problems with. Because in for my analogy is, is like, they're never poor enough to really understand, right? They're never poor enough, but they're never really rich enough to benefit or they're mm -hmm. never black and they're just never enough of something and not close enough to something. And so it's like that right in the middle, right? Like mm -hmm. where it's comfortable. I could just ease on by. I could be a progressive white person with forward thinking, but I don't want to rock the boat. But they've never been so fucked up inside of their whiteness through poverty that they're like, absolutely not. I need to eat today, right? Like they don't have urgency as a right. liberal party. There's no urgency. What you just expressed right there was urgency. We need right. this built now. This story needs to be out there now. That's urgency. Mm -hmm. Liberals right. are like, mm, but do we? Right. Let me let, we'll think let, about let, it. Let, let's put a pin in that. Yeah. And we've been putting fucking pins in liberation for how fucking long? But because it does not impact them enough. It does not create urgency, so I don't fuck with the liberal label either. Okay, respect. And I like that you told me maybe I should drop it too. I like it. And I remember the first Good. the first uh, months that we were live with this, we're launching some social media made by women for women, right? And I, I stopped, talked to an old family friend, old white guy, right? He literally told me I wasn't man enough to do this. And I said, bro, I'm building social media by women for women. I don't think I need to be a man to fucking do that. That's not the, yeah, but how are you, how are you going to get anywhere? I was like, okay. So this white guy canceled me. I was like, fuck it. I don't care. The next week, yeah. liberal, this liberal white guy, the next week, 
uh, I was in a in a clubhouse room and this Latina woman was like, why are you standing up for brown women? So I like wasn't dark enough to do this work. And I was like, okay. And I like engaged in as much conversation as this woman would have with me. And then she just was, she was done. I was like, okay. Yeah. Right. And then the next week I was not gay enough. I had a young day tell me that like my brand was, you know, lady boss. That's really gendered. And I was like, well, I find it to be ironic and that's why I like it. And mm -hmm. I'm here to fuck with the status quo. And I imagine that as a they person, they may also, and also they don't fucking know who I'm going home to. Like, I don't, Need to take, right. right? So I wasn't, I wasn't gay enough. And then the next week, one of my fellow Hebrews told me I wasn't Jewish enough because I wasn't being thrifty enough. And I was like, what the fuck y'all? Like, I was just so like, like, stop it. This conversation more lets me know that you're a fucking anarchist. Um, but like, so that's it though, right? Like, so for me, when you're asking what all of this takes, right? Like anti-oppression, anti, uh, you know, anti-oppression, pro-liberation, I'm like a humanist, right? Because like, you're never, and, and I think my background because of being mixed, right? Because of being Irish and black, like I've never had like the tragic mulatto thing happen to me. Like, I think that white children who are, who have black, who are by bi, what they call biracial, which is an interesting thing for me because whatever, that's just not how race works. But anyway, but when you are a mixed person is that because there's no identity inside of whiteness, when you look like this, when you are brown skin, you are just black, that's how race works, right? But like my color did, did not take away my culture or my ethnicity, right? Like I could absolutely be in front of you and I could actually just say I'm Irish. I don't need to say I'm black because you could see me. <laughs> like. So like you should already know that I'm black, right? Like that I'm Irish as well. So that being said, I'm not entirely sure how I got oh, is that like so it gave me a defined sense of self, right? Because I'm never gonna be enough something for somebody and that's absolutely fucking okay. Because for me, tying in all of those things together is what it's about is solidarity, right? I was on a live the other day with a Jewish friend of mine, right? who we were discussing the Whoopi Goldberg conversation in regard to like Greece, and what does this look like? And um, literally somebody in the comments asked me, why are you explaining anti-Semitism? And I'm like, you're not Jewish. I'm sorry, so I can't fucking talk about anti-Semitism. Like that is like, that is the most insane thing. Like the whole entire point is solidarity. Right, like I should be able to talk about things that are oppressing someone. No, like regardless, right? Like the same way you should be out there doing that work too, like about anti-blackness. Like what the hell is the difference here? Like if yeah. we're only going to give credence to those of a certain group, then how the fuck do we come together? Right. So, yeah. Like where's the solidarity in that? So for me, I don't like my group my healing community makeshift happen, the whole entire identity of it, the whole entire brand of it is about solidarity. It's about like literally, I don't, it's about humanity. If you are here to like release oppression, you're pro-liberation and you're about humans and life, not just humans, just like life, like all around us, the water, the earth, all of these things are our ancestors as well. Right, mm -hmm. but like white supremacy is so fucking deep and so ingrained, we are literally so focused on just these groups, like, and it's and it's the sickness of white supremacy. And white people are impacted by it the most because they are consistently told that they benefit from it. But do you benefit from your culture and your history ever being stripped from you? No. So dismantle it. So for me, that's where that work starts. Is like you need to figure out what the fuck happened to your language and when i have people and i do decolonization work with them my first question is who were you before you were white mm. what language did you speak what's your recipes tell me your culture what music what's your traditional clothes mm -hmm. who were you before this mm -hmm. and that should get your wheels turning that damn who was your grandmother because many white people that are newly white, maybe second, third generation, mm -hmm. 
but three generations ago, they weren't white. So right. who were you? Oh, that's good. That's a good one. That's a really good one. For me, that's where the work begins. White people need to heal before they step out and try to help anybody else. Because what's mm -hmm. happening is, is white people are bleeding all over the fucking place. And now we got to stop doing the work to help them. I got to stop doing the work so I could tell you how to treat people like a human being. Where like, you know what? Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna start this from the beginning. Let's heal your humanity and then you could come out. Mm -hmm. But let's suture that wound first. Let, let, let's heal that first. Which I mean, like, I know you don't need my thanks, but it's still like really beautiful of you as a human to even say like, I'll even look at that wound because I feel like for all intents and purposes, you could easily spit in that wound. You could look away. You could just say good fucking luck with that. Right. I mean, and, I can, and I do to people that are like, you know, that are not concerned with that. Like, all right, well, best of luck with you. But if somebody is actually seeking healing, like, fuck, yes, that resonates. Then, yeah, no. But see, that's the humanist. Right. Like, it is my duty as it that is my duty, you know, to, to care for another human being. Like, I need to be concerned with your plight just as much as I am concerned with my plight, because that's the interconnectedness of us as humans as stewards of the earth, as a people group, right? Like beyond any of this other weird shit that white supremacy has created as a people group, I'm concerned with your well-being. So that kind of answers my wild card question. So maybe I should come up with another one, but basically I'm just curious, are you like, do you, you're an optimist then you, you must have hope because you do show up in this open hearted way. Otherwise, I think of this this kid in one of my um, upper level poli sci classes from undergrad who's like, yeah, I mean, it's all like, like we were like in a, I can't remember what class it was, but the, the professor was this libertarian, this like gun toting libertarian, who like pounded cups of black coffee, like his veins in his forehead were like, we're like, oh my God, this guy's going to have an aneurysm every class. Like you weren't sure if people showed up to class for the lessons or because we thought he might just like, <laughs> Right, right here, right now. This is gonna happen. Right live. Yeah. Kalnowski's dead on the floor. Anyways, <laughs> and this one student, I'll never forget it. And I asked, like, we stay, we're still friends. And I'm like, dude, have you driven off into the sunset yet? He's like, with all this information, right? Like, how come we don't just like go get a fucking Humvee, buy premium gas, and just go, like, just like, fuck off into the sunset and just like, you know, be awful because this place is a dumpster fire and a shit show of a trip, whatever, right? And yeah. I really love what Kalinowski's answer is to that, but I'm curious what yours is. I mean, maybe it's not drive off into the sunset in a Humvee, but you know what I mean? Just like, I mean, it. it's, it's a little bit of both, right? Like, so my thing is, is like, um, yes, you should try to heal, but you should also be prepared, right? Like I support being a gun toting libertarian that says fuck this government. Um, I actually do. I told people like they shouldn't even fucking vote, especially black people. I was like, do not save white America to put, Jim Crow Joe's ass at the helm. Let this motherfucker crumble. So I have a little bit of both, right? Like I have hope that we will come together as people, but I'm also okay with this shit burning to the ground because it's useless to me. So it's the holy so both like, ends. Yeah, it's absolutely like we could burn this motherfucker down and rebuild again because see what's gonna happen is is like for me the repairing of this system is, is superfluous. It's like, what are we repairing? It was never created for all. So right. when you think about yeah. the word repair, it's literally to put back together again. Re, to do again, pair. I don't need it to be repaired. I'm good with destruction. I'm Take okay. it down, build it, build it, build it over. Build it back up. Build it back the fuck up. So uh -huh. yeah, no, I um, support the Humvee, burn it down, get you a bunker, buy some food, get some guns, do that. Also, while you're doing that. Burn some nachos. Meditate, look at your right. fucking chats. <laughs> like I could literally take a picture with like incense and a long gun and it would be very much be who I am as a human. Um, okay, I need to make that portrait for you, please. So wherever you're at in the world, I'm gonna figure out how the fuck to get there and make that portrait of you. Yes, I that... am uh, in Atlanta. You are always welcome here to do that. So yes, that would be me. Come through ATL, Desiree <laughs> Portrait. I'm writing it down. It makes it official. We're doing this shit. Fuck yeah. yeah. I would that would be that would be me. Like incense, oracle cards, and a fucking long gun. Absolutely. Okay. We'll get you up there on that stone mountain and you just reclaim that. We'll 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 shoot it from the top and then straight across too. I can see it already. Yeah, I don't go to Stone Mountain either. Tell me why. 
You just don't. Oh, play. well, because it has the beautiful Ku Klux Klan carved in it, and I want to blow the motherfucking whole mountain face off. You want to blow it up. You don't want you. Okay, so you don't want to. You don't want to. Okay, I get you. I was like, we will. Desiree will like Mount Stone Mountain, but you're like, no, we want to blow that shit up. Okay. Yeah. 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 We can find a place. We can figure that out. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, this has been cool. Thanks for flipping the script and like letting me interview you. This has been like such a wonderful way, a totally different pod experience than I've ever had. So thank you. No, thank you for being willing to do it. Cause I was like, yeah, it makes no sense. What the fuck am I going to do? Like you wanted to ask me questions on my views. Well, okay. Then it makes zero <laughs> sense that I would host it. Right. Like, um, well, you I know, know why. I think that. <laughs> you know what? Say again. I like, because I know the way, the reasons why I feel the way I feel. So, like, I just figured it would make more sense. So, thank you for, like, on a drop of a dime, like, oh, fuck, yes, I'm down to do that. You can take the girl of the show. You can't take the show out of the girl, you know? Just there jump right in. Hop on the mic. So, maybe one day um, I can invite you on to our feature stage and we can, you could interview me. We'll flip the script that way. I would be honored. I would love to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Um, yeah. Let me know when. Awesome. 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 I totally will. Thank you again. I, Anything well, else you to say? About the end this, I want to know where people can find you. I want people oh, to yeah. find you because Lady Boss International, it, it is, it is a cringe name, but I really, because I've experienced you in Clubhouse, I know that it's intentional. So tell us a little bit about that while people can find out where to find you as well. Totally. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cheeky bitch. So I like, I like to come up with words that make people be like, what? Like we're trying to topple the patriarchy, but I'm also just like, uh, I don't want to hear about people being like, you're so aggressive or like, you know, and I'm like, okay, we're, we're trying to smash it. And then I was like, no, we're schmoppling the patriarchy because I like to make up words and it's kind of feels a little like fraggle. It's a little Yiddish feeling. So like, that's what we're doing. We're schmoppling the patriarchy. Yeah. Um, and the way we're schmoppling the patriarchy is I'm, I'm building this social media by women for women. So check us out on Instagram. It's um, underscore, what is it? LBI underscore backstage on IG. Um, I would also just love to invite you backstage. You can come to LBI backstage pass.com and see how we are pulling back the curtain on how business is done and literally flipping the script on how we share our tools and resources. Uh, basically because I think it's bullshit that we have this one system and that that's how we're supposed to do it. And that's how all of the things are going to get better because as we shared earlier, right? Like you can't just fucking put pink on the patriarchy again, comes from Amanda Bell. Um, and I'm here for it. Like I, I basically got, um, a loan during COVID to save my production company, my business. And I was like, fuck big events. Uh, also fuck being exhausted all the time. And not that I'm not exhausted right now, but I, taken that money and I've put it into building this platform uh, by women for women. And my hope is that uh, the next time Mr. Fuckerberg is at the Senate hearing committee, um, he'll ask to borrow my phone book to sit on because uh, I'll be standing proud and tall, uh, not at the Senate hearing committee, fucking with people's privacy and shit. Anyways, I get, I get a little soapbox on that, but I'm really all about, <laughs> um, you know, seeing, seeing the power structures that, that exist and, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, being like, that's fucked, that's fucked. But you know what? I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that. Um, yes, I will take your loan. Thank you, Patriarchy, for uh, loaning me some money so I can schmopple you. And, you know, connecting with other badass humans, doing good things to help us stay human. So, um, yeah, Instagram is the best place to find us if you're not on that old-fashioned World Wide Web. Ladybossinternational.club is our main website. I love it. I love it. And I hope everybody goes there. And um, thank you. Honestly, thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for even giving a shit to hear my thoughts on it and not just being like, fuck her. She's a nut. I appreciate that. Well, right back at you, lady, because it's, it's definitely one of the, and that's what I think is like, we both are kind of fringe outliers, like fuck this. But I think the more people that are exhausted at being fringe outliers, like then we're suddenly like, wait, you're, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The more conversations, that's solidarity, right? Like you recognize like all of that other shit really doesn't matter. We're here for the same. I like it. Cool, Desiree. Thank you.